The Autons might have originally seemed like a strange first choice of villain to bring back for the revival. Shop window dummies and plastic bins for a whole new generation of kids. They're so weirdly specific a threat that they could have easily come off as comical. But what does Davis do? Same thing Doctor Who always does. Take the contemporary mundane and make it go on a killing spree. They were perfect for the revival because they embody the superficial world and mundanity and retail that Rose is fighting to leave behind. And you can explain them in two words. Evil plastic. Plastic, but evil. But if I want to explain it in 2,000 words? You're in luck. Here's the whole timeline of those plastic guys from Doctor Who. Naturally, plastic is quite a late addition to history. It's a, a fairly recent invention in a series spanning all of time and space. If the Nestine landed in ancient Greece or ancient Egypt, it wouldn't have anything to do. And according to the novelization of City of Death, this actually happened. The Nestine consciousness arrived, felt embarrassed and packed up and left. Oof, I'll come back later. And that they did. Still in the pre-plastic era, they laid a trap for the Doctor and made a model Rory. For some reason. But that's kind of it. Because of their main concept, they're kind of limited to being a modern villain. But that doesn't mean they don't have history. No, let me introduce you to the lengthy, deep origin story of the Nestine consciousness. The Nestine, it may surprise you to know, are part of a prehistory species called the Early Ones. Actually, less a species, more a collective, more a pantheon. The amorphous Great Old Ones that we sometimes encounter in stories like The Web of Fear or The Web Planet. The Nestine Consciousness is from before time itself, because as of course we all know, it was birthed by the omnipotent elder god sub Nigarath on the planet Polymos. Pause for applause. <laughs> Damn, the more I dive into this lore, the more I see that the Hooniverse is actually just the same universe as HP Lovecraft. The Nestine as we know it is usually just a mass of telepathic polymers with a nervous system inside. Why this leads to it sometimes being a tentacled octopus monster though, is beyond me. I don't know, let's blame Lovecraft. But this physical host can replicate anything it likes, leading to it being the shape of planets, people, pure energy sometimes, and most recently, the likeness of the deceased Boris Johnson. Cheers, Russell. In their early history, their constant colonizations led to battles with the Time Lords. They were on that kind of level eons ago. It's actually Rassilon himself who traps him in a galaxy and destroyed it with the Galaxy Eater, which is especially strange because they form an alliance later. Hmm, short memory. Anyway, when humans do start distributing plastics in what is probably the 70s, but also maybe the 80s, but also don't worry about it. Their first attempt involved replacing key government figures. Oh, classic. Classic oldie but goldie plan. Not long after, infamous renegade Naughty Boy the Master follows the Doctor to Earth and obtains a Nestine Meteor. This plan just cut straight to the chase and just involved suffocating everyone instead. Though through some very bizarre means. The first products distributed by the Master's startup business were plastic daffodils, scary chucky dolls that no child would own in their house, and these guys, who are not suspect at all. I think out of all of them, Autons are the most flamboyant when it comes to invasions. Doctor Who and the attack of the yo-yos, Doctor Who and the vibrations of terror, <laughs> and the less said about the Master's inflatable gaming chair, the better. Then, it all goes a bit quiet on the Auton front, as we remember, oh yeah, this iconic Who baddie only had two TV appearances back in the day. In the world of pros, they do lurk around a bit though, even if it is the exact same plan tried in different decades. Sometimes multiple times. Unsurprisingly, they don't work. Ooh, a plastics company. I wonder who this villain could be. I always found it very funny when Eccleston just has a vial of anti-plastic, like that's a thing. Because apparently they are that predictable and easy to take down. There was an Auton story once by Robert Shearman where Six found them such a non-threat that he took ballroom dancing classes mid-story. But then the Nestine fell in love. Settling on a planet called Nestinia with the embodiment of Gris, who is another returning Doctor Who baddie, and yeah, they apparently shared a romance. Whatever the fuck that entails. Apparently the embodiment of Gris, a pretty serious tier Doctor Who villain, just bestowed gifts upon the Nestine. Oh, you charmer you. But then, there was war. 
Rassilon, of all people, colludes with them to create a plastic copy of the War Doctor for propaganda reasons. <laughs> you can't make it up. This genius and not at all petty plan is easily foiled by the Doctor pinky promising that he is going to protect them in the Time War. The War Doctor did not keep his promise. With its planet entirely ravaged from the fallout and their new Entity GF driven mad by a blizzard of TikTok, the hungry Nestine tries its luck at Earth again. Using the city's most obvious landmark as a transmitter, and defeated by a 17 year old girl with a average capability in gymnastics, this was maybe an all time new low for the Nestine consciousness. It is also noted in this attempt that the Nestine really wanted to try pizza. Pizza! Pizza. This important side plot, kind of a B plan, was almost pulled off until the Knife Doctor pulled off its head. There is no further conclusive evidence that the nesting consciousness has ever eaten pizza. This novel doesn't have the answers. Answer my questions on Twitter, Russell! In 2013, they finally get busy again, setting up the Earth's largest shopping centre in which they dress up as shop window dummies, vampires, witches and skeletons to fight the 10th Doctor. What's interesting about this batch is that these are the guys from the Pertwee era unit stories. They got busy in the world of business. But then, how many industries are there for plastic people? These guys have really upped their game and their production value. They're also in a unit story where they realise they can just turn organic matter into plastic? Like damn, just do that all the time guys. And let's not forget the crossover where Tortured's Reese Williams encountered an angry swarm of rubber ducks bobbing in the North Atlantic. Not only is this a really good story, check it out, but it also confirms more Autons still on Earth. What will they do next? I don't know, probably try and replace world leaders from a plastics factory again? Fool me six times, shame on you. Like the Jadoon, the Autons have become a bit of an ensemble villain. They show their face at Stonehenge, they pop round for Drenzalore. In the former, they scan Amy Pond's brain for inspiration, which is a strange detail of the plan that brings back a fully operational and self-aware Rory Williams, almost giving the entire game away. But a good rule of thumb with Doctor Who is that the more convoluted and dumb the plan is, the more likely it's going to work and trick the Doctor. Meanwhile, on Drenzalore, they just get past the metal barrier and send a hit squad to gank him. And see, that doesn't work, even though it's clearly a superior plan. And, uh, yeah, I really thought there would be more. Staggeringly few appearances, even in the novels and comics. Practically non-existent on audio, as they're not really the most vocal enemies. And, uh, yeah, only two appearances in the classic, two appearances in the modern. Yet everybody, when you say Doctor Who, thinks, oh yeah, shot window dummies. Because although they are a gimmick villain, plain and true, they are iconic. And that's because, yeah, they're a really great, everyday, deranged idea. What if one of our most common, over-disposable building materials just turned against us? It's just a shame that none of their stories actually have anything to say. I mean, even stories without them have more to say about plastic usage. Back in the days where we weren't living Praxius. I could spout some bollocks about how they're consumerism incarnate, but the proof simply isn't on the page. Not yet, anyway. I want them to come back. I do. Even if it's just the Auton spatula called Graham, who can flip pancakes on his own. Big shout. Him back, please. All in all, I give them a C. A very serviceable, flexible, but very repetitive monster. Honestly, I think they'd work better if you didn't know they were coming. If the episode didn't advertise it right up front, it's the plastic people! Thank you for watching. My favourite baddies, they're up next.